Webster has been affectionately referred to as America's best known quilt expert. Her designs were so influential that she is said to be the quilt designer most copied in the 20th century. It was 1909, the year Marie turned 50, that she made her first quilt. She had recently moved into her new colonial home in Marion, Indiana, and wanted to decorate. Well, Marie was inspired by a traditional Rose of Sharon pattern, and she referred to those colors as oil red, oil green, and sometimes violent yellow. While working out her own design, Marie applique petals cut from soft pastels of linen, and then she added a trellis to the design. Her friends and family urged her to send her pink rose quilt to the Ladies' Home Journal. Under the leadership of Edward Boke, it had become the most popular woman's magazine. Boke decided to run a full-page feature in dazzling color with four of Marie's quilts on January 1st, 1911. And right here is her pink rose quilt. Well, his decision launched her career as a professional quilt designer. And as Marie soon found out, fame has its price. Well, there were no transfer patterns available, but readers were invited to send a stamped addressed envelope and Mrs. Webster would be glad to respond. Well, you know how quilters are when they see beautiful quilts. <laughs> she was inundated with requests for patterns. Her son Lawrence, a mechanical engineer, came up with the idea of printing the full-size patterns on blueprint paper. And then right here, she also put the patterns on, on tissue paper. Great idea. Well, within a month, patterns for Marie Webster's new patchwork quilts were on sale for just 50 cents a piece. Marie designed this quilt for the Ladies Home Journal in 1915 and it's called French Basket. Now this one was made by one of her readers and it was shared by her granddaughter Rosalind Webster Perry. Ooh, I love the flowers in the basket. They were inspired by the flowers in her garden. Love the braided handle and the wicker baskets. Just beautiful, isn't it? Now this was one of Marie's most popular patterns. Frank Doubleday of Doubleday Books was a good friend of Edward Bogues. So Doubleday invited Marie to write a book about the history of quilts. And in 1915, the first quilt book in the United States was published. And it's called Quilts, Their Story and How to Make Them by Marie Webster, 1950, Doubleday. Now this is actually a reprint of the original one. This one was published by Rosalind Webster Perry. For Marie Webster, the pioneer of quilt history, I dedicate our next star. Ooh, it's beautiful in soft pastel colors, just as Marie would have wanted it. Now the center is easy to do and the points are just great fun. It's our second to last star in the Stars Across America sampler. Ooh, we are so close to being finished. So let's pay tribute to this remarkable lady and add Marie Webster to the gallery of stars. was very proud of her finished book. One month after it was published, she was contacted by Who's Who in America for some personal data. And the whole concept of a woman author was so new to them that they had crossed off Dear Sir in the form letter and had inserted Dear Mrs. Well, I know that Marie would prefer that I start off with some pastel fabrics, but I want to get my Stars Across America quilt done, so I'm into red, white, and blue again. Now, this is the center, and right here you need to have two fabrics. This is a medium and a dark, and they are both two and five-eighths inch strips, ooh, and six inches long. And so once you seam those together, they should measure four and three-fourths inches. So all I'm gonna do right now is just line up my six by six and cut these into two 
two and five eighths inch pieces. Let's see if I can get these nice and straight right here. One more, ooh, and just a touch to spare. Well, we'll just get rid of that one. Now take these two pieces and turn them so that you have the four patch like this. Just four pieces right sides together, right there, and this piece is a four and a fourth inch piece. You need to have two squares, and you're just gonna go ahead and cut those on the diagonal, and they're gonna go around the outside edges. Let's see if I just position them like this. You have to pretend that these are sewn together, but whenever you sew these together, when you flip them, you always make sure that this point is lined up with the seams right along there. So do two opposite sides, and then press them open, and then the two remaining sides, so you have that whole center unit completed. And this is what it looks like right here. It is to be squared up to six and a half inches. So just take your square up ruler and drop the diagonal line right down through that middle. Ooh, and let's see. We got a quarter inch here, a quarter inch seam here, looking good all around. So let's just trim this on two sides. Perfect for that little oversizing. And then once you have the two sides trimmed, then just drop it, line it up again, diagonal line down through the middle, quarter inch off of each one of those seams. Perfect. Up and over. And is that easy or what for the center? Done already. Now the points are a little different, and they start out with two pieces, right sides together. I'm using the medium red and the dark red, right sides together in a piece that's four and a half by nine inches. Now the first thing you want to do is draw a four and a half inch squaring line, diagonal lines right down through there, and then just sew on both sides of the diagonal line. We've done that step before. So once you have all of your sewing done, then go ahead and cut this into pieces on the diagonal right through here, and then down through one more cut. Gosh, your star should be coming along great. Now these pieces need to be pressed, and you're going to press the seam to the dark side. So drop them with the medium on the bottom, set the seam, and then just lift it up and go right down through. Steam is a personal preference. Oh, you might want to use steam just to make that nice and flat. And then once you have them pressed, all you've got to do is square these pieces up to four inches. Drop your six by six ruler right down through the seam. Let's see, line that up. Oh, just a tad, just about one eighth of an inch on, on four sides. So trim it up and over once it's centered and then turn it around. Make sure your pieces right are at a perfect four inches. Well, you've seen this step before, but it's the next step that's a little tricky. We're gonna just take these and stack them up. I've got some already squared up here. And we're going to turn them and take the ruler and cut right down through. So we've got literally two different pieces. So take all four, cut those. We've got a couple more to cut. Stack them up as you go. It's so easy to get these mixed up, isn't it? And one more, and that'll do it. Let's see, how about I use one of these that I pressed a little bit better. I think we'll like that. Okay, line that up, trim it. Now, these are the points of the star. The background fabric is cut into a seven and a fourth inch piece. Right here it is. And just take your ruler and cut these into fours. Boy, we've done that a number of times on the seven and a fourth inch squares, but just cut it on one diagonal. Once you cut it on one diagonal, just go back, cut it a second time so that you have four pieces that are identical. Let's just take these, stack them up, and turn these so that you have the darks going down like this on one side and darks on the other. And that's the points on the star. And it's a quarter inch seam, 15 stitches to the inch. Just get these two stacks nice and close to you. Now when you flip this piece right sides together, you automatically have this straight edge that you can line it up with. And you should have just a bit of a tip 
right up on the top. So let's see if we can just get these lined up here. Quarter inch. Ooh, that's a good tip up there. Okay, let me get that thread in order and step on the gas. This is the easy part now because there's great points that you can match. Just flip the next one and just keep on assembly line sewing all four right down in a row. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Doubleday and Marie Webster. Well, you know, whenever they published that book, they put out 125 numbered copies that were very special. They were grand editions. They had gold edge trimming. They were in a special box, and they sold those for $5 a copy. Now, the other ones were just sold for $2.50 a copy. And whenever uh, Lawrence and Marie saw those beautiful $5 copies, they wrote Doubleday a letter and said, oh, they were just magnificent. And Doubleday wrote back and said, oh, yes, we're quite, quite proud of those books. We think they'll sell okay, but it's not going to be a big sell. Well, weren't they surprised when they sold out within the first year? They just didn't know quilters, did they? Now take this, and once you have it uh, sewn, because it is on the bias, just go ahead and run your finger right along here. Just do a little bit of finger pressing. That should go in nice and straight along there. Let me clip these as I go across here. Well, they had to go right into, into, into a reprint within the second year. And do you know by the end of that reprint that Marie had received six thousand letters from writers. That really put quite a surprise on them, didn't it? They had no idea. Okay, now take this stack and turn this again so that the darks are right down here on the bottom like this. When you flip that right sides together, then you have a nice straight edge again. You have that point sticking up, up in the top. So let's line that up. Let's see if we can get that in there straight. To hold your tongue just right. Grab the presser foot, hold on those threads, and then as you get up here, you're going to just hold these seams down flat and just continuously assembly line sew those right along there. Let me take a look at just one of them, see how it looks. Okay, got that quarter inch seam up at the top, that's perfect, and then that seam going right down here, right into the edges, looking good. Now these pieces are squared up to three and a half inches by six and a half inches. So grab your six by, grab your square up ruler and drop it so that the diagonal line goes right down through and there is not much to trim off over here at the sides. That is perfect. But as you go up here lining the diagonal line up, you want to make sure you cut that right so the point, so it's right at the point. So take it up and over and turn it. This is the critical trim because you want to just have a quarter inch seam right along there. Six and a half inches, three and a half here, three and a quarter right there, up and over. And that's it for the points of the star. Now let's just take those pieces, lay them all out, and I'll show you how it's finished up. The center is right here, like this, and you're going to have the four points right around the outside edge. I think that is a pretty incredible way to make those points. And then the whole star is finished off with remaining three and a half inch background squares. And there aren't too many tricky points to match on this. Jeff's got to line that up right along there. Just sew it together and you'll have another star done. Sandy Thompson sewed four Marie Webster stars together and then added four borders for this beautiful quilt. It's interesting how she did it. Now the first border is made up so that it fits right next to the star pieces. The background corner on the star was three and a half inches, so this piece square is also three and a half inches. And then right here, the star points were squared to three and a half by six and a half. So to fit it in, there's a three and a half by six and a half background square. Now the next border was easy because that was just a strip of background fabric. But this one is very interesting. It's a seminal border added on and then 
for the final touch, just a nice wide border on the outside edge. Now she did some great quilting on it, some free motion machine quilting all over the top. Let me show you that first border. It starts out with a piece that is 8 inches by 16 inches. And she drew on first a 4 inch grid, drew on the diagonal lines, and then did all that diagonal line sewing a quarter inch from the line. Now, once you've got your sewing done, go ahead, cut it apart, and when you open it up, you're going to have these two pieces, piece squares. And I just, it's just like the ones that I showed you earlier today. These pieces are squared up to three and a half inches. You're going to make 16 of them. That'll go fast for you. Now, once you have those 16 done, put them in stacks of four. Four stacks of four along with pieces of background that are three and a half by six and a half. And you actually have to do two different combinations. This is the first combination. You'll make four just like this one, kind of shooting in opposite directions there. And then this is the next one, different combination going out this way. Pretty amazing because once you make four of each set, then you take this set here and this set here and you sew them together so you've got some star points right in the middle of it. Make four of these and you'll have the first border done. Let me show you the Seminole border because that's one of my favorites. I love working with stripes. We'll just move this to the side. Now they come from two and five eighths inch strips and you're going to just take the background and the, the print whatever you want to use. They're two and five eighths inch strips and you're going to make three and a half sets of them. And go ahead, just take that end right there, trim off your salvage edge, get rid of that, and then line up your ruler at two and five eighths and cut a bunch. How about 56 of them? Just move that right along two and five eighths until you get 56 done. Let me just cut one more and I'm going to sew them. So make two equal stacks of these. Got some all ready to go. And when you line them up, you're going to stack them so that one is always higher than the other. You always have one here, one here, so that when you take this second piece and flip it right sides together, you're always lining up this seam right here so that you can line that, roll that right into place. And then up here at the top, you always have that quarter inch space. You're going to create that seam right there. So let's get this stepped on the gas. And when you do seminal, there's a lot of times you're just sewing and there's nothing underneath the needle. But because you're assembly line sewing, it's easier just to go ahead and do that. Okay, get that lined up. Stack that one right here. Now, so we can assembly line, take the next one, lay it like that, flip it right sides together, and line that up, and just shoot that right through. Actually, this is a great step to do on your serger, because you can do all of the quick assembly line strip sewing. You're actually going to turn all 56 into pairs, and then once you have pairs done, cut them apart, and you're going to open them up like this. Always stair-stepping, stair-stepping down. So now right here, this is going to line up here. Flip this right sides together and then just continue. And to make the sides, you're going to sew six sets of pairs for two of them and seven sets of pairs for the remaining two. Let me just finish this one and then I'll show you how to trim that edge up. See how it's looking. And the way you push your seams, it's pretty easy to get a good match in there. Yeah, it goes all along, stair step, and then actually it's on point whenever you put it together. Now once you have that done, all you're going to do is just take these strips and line up the ruler at a quarter inch off of this point right here. Line up the ruler at a quarter inch from the point. Just trim all those tips off so you've got the quarter inch seam. Just get rid of these and I'll lay out the whole top and show you how to put it together. As a tribute to Marie Webster, I've added applique to my quilt top.
Now this is Marie's pattern. This is called May tulips, slender leaves, and look at those graceful tulips. They're so pretty. But I'm gonna do the applique my way. Now I like to use fusible interfacing, and right now this is her pattern underneath, smooth side of interfacing on the top. And all you do is take a permanent marking pen and just trace the pattern right through. You could just go ahead trace a whole bouquet of flowers and then once you have your tracing done you just place it on the fabric so that the fusible side is next to the right side of the fabric and then just sew on the line it couldn't be easier use a small stitch about 20 stitches to the inch and then just trim around it approximately 1 8 inch from the edge and then right here you can just go ahead take a little cut about 1 8 inch, and then separate it with your scissors and cut a little hole right into the interfacing. Now, the best tools to turn this are the straw and the, bag, the bodkin. The straw and a ballpoint bodkin, take the straw and stick it right into the fusible interfacing and turn it so that the fabric is on the straw and then just push it in halfway. It's halfway turned, take the straw and stick it in on the opposite end, push the ball on the fabric, and then just turn it. Then all you really need to do is just take the bodkin, run it around the inside edge, poke out all of those points, smooth that, and then to get nice crisp points up here, just take your stiletto and pick that out. Now that the applique is turned, just lay it on your white area of your quilt and fuse it in place. See that stuck down? And when I machine quilt, I'll sew around these edges as well. Now the Seminole corners are interesting because you trim them so that you still have one quarter inch right here and right here. I added an extra pair on. And then when you sew these together, that's going to be matched here and pay particular attention so that the points are lined up straight across with the point of the star. Well, this quilt is certainly blooming. After World War I, Marie's Pattern Company flourished. Two close friends, Ida Hess and Evangeline Bescher, joined her in starting the Practical Patchwork Company. They sold kits and finished quilts in Marie's popular patterns right from her home in Marion, Indiana. The home is now a National Historic Landmark and it houses the Quilters Hall of Fame. Well, Marie had such wonderful designs that they were often copied by other companies. Now, I found this applique kit put out by the Home Craft Creations Company and it's called Colonial Charm. And the kit's still intact. Oh, it was such a lucky find at a garage sale. Now, all of the floral pieces are printed right on the pastel fabrics. And then all the quilter has to do is just cut out these pieces, and they're ready for applique. And even the binding is included. And look at this. This is the background fabric all ready for the applique. Ooh, it's great. Sounds like my kind of work. Now, I also found this quilt. And this one, the quilter got started on, but actually wasn't able to finish it. And right here, you can see the applique work along here. Here's the quilting lines already. Well, it must be true. Quilters have to live longer to get all of their work done, don't they? Well, Marie popularized the medallion, or the central design, as you see it in this quilt. Her instructions said to quilt around the leaves, the flowers and the stems, instead of going across them. And then this gives the raised effect. This quilt is just beautiful with all the embroidered pansies and the soft pastels. And then the, the, the design was carried out into the corners and finished with an attractive border as these scallops. Oh, this is real Marie Webster. Now, baskets were popular in glassware as well as on quilts. The basket makes up the central part of this quilt, and then it's surrounded by these beautiful bouquets of flowers, and this one certainly shows Marie's influence. Marie Webster and the Practical Patchwork Company chose John Keats' poem as their motto, a thing of beauty 
as a joy forever. Marie encouraged pride in fine workmanship. May you discover a joy forever as you make your Marie Webster star.